In this video, I want to talk about automating testing of the application using Selenium and the PHP testing framework Codeception. And I've been using this so far um, on my leads application and I've had really good results so far. Uh, basically what happens is we're going to run a Java application and it is going to pop up a browser for us and it's going to do anything we want on the website. It's going to fill out fields for us. It's going to submit forms. It's going to check the feedback after the form is submitted. And we're going to be able to automate all of our tests this way so you don't have to do this yourself. So if you ever find yourself um, filling out registration forms to test your application or um, filling out logins and things like that, you're not going to have to do that anymore once you um, start using uh, Selenium. Based on my testing experience so far, I've found Selenium to be the most accurate way to test the application because what happens is it's actually going to open up a browser for you. It's going to fill out the fields and it's going to uh, interact with the JavaScript in the website the same way um, you would if you were um, doing it manually yourself. So what I'll do first is I'll just uh, show you a quick demonstration of how this works. So I think what I'll do here is I will actually just show this demonstration first and afterwards I will um, give you some tips on how to set it up and also uh, how it's working. Um, so the first thing is we have a Selenium server here and I'm just going to push Control C um, to shut that server down and I'm going to press the up key to show you the command to um, start the server and you'll see um, that we need Java installed on our uh, computer for this to work. Um, I have a Mac so uh, Java comes by default and you'll see the command is java-jar and then the name of the Selenium jar file that you've downloaded um, I've rena renamed mine to something a bit shorter um, selenium-2.4.1.jar and then uh, what I'm doing after that is I'm specifying the port now by default I believe this will run on port 4444 but if you already have um, some applications running on that then another option um, one option is to sort that out and to get those processes killed but another way is just to run Selenium on another port um, so I've specified the port option here and I'm going to run it on 4445 so I'm just going to hit enter here and if you don't see any errors um, you have launched a standalone server and then I'm just going to go um, to my next tab here and you'll see uh, the last one I had a successful test here this is what you will see when you have a successful test, you will see um, you'll see all of the different uh, name tests and the result. You'll see they're all okay here, and then you'll get uh, a green bar if colors are enabled, saying okay, there was nine tests and 21 uh, assertions, and they went fine. Um, one thing to note is that um, while Selenium tests are the most accurate, um, they're also the slowest because. Um, you know your computer actually has to open up the browsers fill out the fields and whatnot and you'll see that this uh, test suite that I ran right here um, took 1.5 minutes um, this could have been sped up so much um, I'll just show you for a second the um, my uh, selenium suite.yaml file and you'll see that um, you can when you're configuring this you can actually set a delay um, I have a delay of 200 milliseconds so um, between each action that is taken, um, I have a delay of 200 sec seconds. And I like to do this because I actually like to watch it happen in the browser sometimes. And also, if you're using JavaScript, you might need to um, specify a delay here because, for example, um, if I just go over to my app for a second, um, for example, if I click Post FCL Lead here, um, you'll see that we're using Twitter Bootstrap and this is this is of course a jQuery animation so it's going to take a little bit of time for this to show up and if you had your delay set to zero um, what's going to happen is um, your tests are going to fail because um, Selenium is going to tell you or uh, Codeception is going to tell you that it wasn't able to see the form and that's because the animation takes time to open so um, if you're using animations in your site um, you also want to set an appropriate delay um, for Selenium so I'm gonna go back over um, to my bash prompt here and just press up and um, when you are uh, you know saving the uh, Codeception program on your computer um, it's a .far file I believe 
um, you can you can save it wherever you want somewhere in your path where um, it's going to be found and in my case I just saved it as sept C -E -P -T, um, just something short that I can write but you can save the program um, as, a, as whatever name you want um, so here I have uh, CEPT uh, run and then I've passed in the dash V option this will give us a verbose output and I definitely recommend you add this um, I found it really helpful with debugging and then I'm going to run my Selenium suite. So I'm just going to run this command now to start the test. And you'll see um, it's starting up right now. Codeception is powered by PHP unit. And what's going to happen here is with every test, um, it's going to pop up a new Firefox browser. Um, it's going to do my test. And once each test finished, um, it's going to close it. So each time it's starting with a new browser, it's starting with no session and you're starting from a blank slate each time. Um, further to that, it's also uh, using a new database build each time. So um, each, te each test is not dependent on the previous one. Um, it is really starting from a blank slate each time, including um, with the database. So you'll see um, I can set it to do anything I want. Um, when we're filling out these forms, of course the user needs to be logged in first. Um, so I'm having the user to be logged in each time. Um, that is its own method. It's not repeated in every one. So I'm calling that login method with each test. I'm logging the user in, and then we're uh, filling out all the different, um, basically all the different features of the site, posting an air freight lead, posting a boat lead, and any other thing that you want to test on your site. I'll just let these uh, tests finished. I think there's not too much more now. So the last one is this trucking one. I'm first going to log in the user. Once they're logged in, we're going to fill out the form to pose the trucking lead. And the test should be completed now. So if I go back to my, um, my bash right here, you'll see it tells us everything that happened. Trying to register a new account with the correct creds and confirm registration, OK all of the different things, post a new trucking lead, OK, and uh, all of the tests have passed. In order to keep this video more brief, I'm not going to show how to install uh, Codeception or Selenium in this video, but what you can do is you can go over to codeception.com slash install, and it will show you the different ways that you can install um, Codeception on your computer. And I think we can quickly go over to the uh, Selenium module here, and it will give you some tips on um, installing Selenium. The first thing you'll need to do is download a Selenium RC server. Let's just open that in a new tab. And basically, it's going to give you a link here where you can download Selenium server. Uh, let's open this 2.4.1 in a new tab. And you'll see actually that just prompted the download of the .jar file. So you'll, you can save that. Um, I think you can save it wherever you want in your computer. Um, I save mine in my project within a software folder. I'll just discard that. And then, um, of course, in order to execute it, you will have Java installed first, and then java-jar, and then the name of the jar file. And if you wanted to do like me, specify a port. And in my case, I ran it on port 4445. So what we can do now is we can go over um, to some of the test files. Uh, you'll see that um, I've actually created a custom suite here. It's called the Selenium Suite. And anything that is specified um, within the Selenium Suite.yaml file, these things are going to override um, basically the base YAML file, which is codeception.yaml. Um, this has some basic settings in here. Um, you can set where uh, your tests are located, um, your DB configuration. And um, I've over, overridden this with some options in my um, in the actual suites YAML file. And you'll see I've specified a few custom options here, such as the delay, uh, delay of 200. Now, if you want to um, change this delay to something else, maybe you want to make it a bit slower, I will change the delay um, to 400 there. And then I'll go back over to my command prompt. And what you are going to do after that is you're going to type the name of your um, Codeception program. In my case, I just renamed it as SAPT, but you should do whatever you've named your program. And then you will need to type build after that. 
Okay, so it's not enough just to change the YAML file. After you do that, you're going to run um, the build command. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to uh, install everything again. And it's going to um, update your settings. Now, I've done something a little bit different um, with my Selenium test just to save time. And I don't think uh, this is a best practice, but I've actually been uh, interacting with the database um, on these tests. I believe that should be done unit testing, but just to save time, um, while my Selenium testings, tests were running, I've also been checking things in the database and just making sure um, you know they are the way I want them, the way I expect them. Um, but basically, no matter what test suite you're using, if you want to interact with your database and you want to check some values in the database after you've um, done a particular action, you will need to um, enable the DB module. Okay, after you enable that, um, of course, you'll need to run the build command again. And you can also set the DB configuration down here. You'll see I have uh, my PDO options here so that it can connect to the database. And I've also specified a few other options. I've included a dump file here. So what's going to happen is before every single test, um, we are going to um, rebuild the database from this SQL file. And I, I think I have it open right here. And you'll see we just have an entire SQL dump here. Um, that is, so the database is going to be rebuilt on every test. And I also have populate set to true. Um, I believe this, uh, I think this is the default setting, but what that's going to do is it's just going to um, rebuild the database uh, each time. And then clean up false. I think this will do, what this will do is actually um, do the um, migration of the database again after every test, but is that's not necessary. We just need to um, rebuild the database before every test. So that's what's happening with these settings here. And the last thing we can do is actually go over to uh, the test file. Okay, so all of my tests are uh, right here. Um, this is my lead test. So there's two kinds of tests you can do um, in Codeception. There's SEP test and SEST. And basically you'll need the, di the only difference between them is the SEPs are procedural and the SESTs are more object oriented. Um, they're in a class and um, I found the classes to be I'm using the SES a bit more flexible. For example, you notice in many of my different tests, I needed to log in. So we have this login, this login. So in order to in order to avoid writing all of the different steps um, that uh, are needed to happen for a user to log in, this has all been um, extracted to its own uh, protected function at the bottom here. And you'll see here we have protected function login. I click login. I fill this field, I fill the email field, uh, I fill the password field, and I click submit. I just wanted to give a few tips on um, some of the different, uh, basically some of the different methods we can use in Codeception. For example, with this fill field, uh, fill field one, um, the best way that I've found so far to uh, target the field you want is to, what I've done here is I've actually given an ID to the form. So the form has an ID of login form. Uh, you'll see that at the front there. And then after that, I'm selecting an attribute. So I'm selecting, well, obviously this is an input field. We could go like this, input name equals email. But just to save typing, what I'm doing is I'm targeting an element um, with a name attribute, which is equal to email. And that should be a child of the login form. And I think this is really important because um, you know, on a given page on your website, you could have several different forms um, that have an input with the name of email. So what I'm doing is I'm referencing this as a child of the login form. And in this way, we know that um, we will never be targeting the wrong form. I will always be targeting um, the exact email field that I want because uh, I'm referencing it as a child of the login form. So I fill the login form uh, with the email. Uh, with my email address, uh, which is, of course, already in the database. This is already specified um, inside my dump file, um, so this is going to work. Uh, I put in the password, and then I click Submit. So that's basically how you click on buttons and how you fill out um, input fields or password fields. 
Um, if you are dealing with a select, you can use this select option. It's very similar. Um, so for select drop downs, I select option, and then I'm doing the same thing here. I I first put an ID on the form, the lead form, and then I'm selecting uh, the um, the select with a name of from country, and then I'm selecting Australia. In this second one, you can select the text of the option, or you can select the value, and you can put either one there. In in my case, uh, I believe I'm selecting the um, the text there. Let's just go down a bit more here. So at the bottom, I click to um, submit the form, and then what I do after that is I see in database. So after I submit it, I want to make sure what I've just done. I see it in the database. The first argument here is the table, uh, in my case, freight lead international moving, and then I'm checking that the moving date column has this date, and that the two city has the imaginary city. Finally, the last test that I do is I check that I can see the imaginary city um, on the page. So after we submit it, I check it's in the database, and then I check that I can see it on the page, because what happens after we submit a lead, we get redirected back to um, the leads page we were just on. So I should be able to see my new lead there, and I want to see my imaginary city inside of a TD cell. So that's basically all I want to talk about in this lesson about using Codeception and Selenium. And I think this is going to be really helpful for my application um, for testing um, all these different components of my website. They use JavaScript, they use jQuery animations in order, and in order to be able to get accurate results. And even though the tests are a little bit slower, um, you can see my last test was 1.71 minutes. Um, I think as programmers we need to take breaks every once in a while. So you don't need to watch this. You can let the test run and you can go get a coffee or get a coke and you can come back and see if your tests were successful or not.